Hello guys, today I will make an attempt to explain the MAC uh, constructions. Uh, the first will be the MAC based on hash functions and the MAC based on block ciphers. And I will not discuss the dedicated MAC, just the first two. So uh, the MAC based on hash functions, we have uh, two attempts, the pre-MAC and the app MAC. And we also have a third type. So the pre-MAC, app-MAC, and the edge-MAC. Uh, we will discuss the pre-MAC. The pre-MAC, pre stands for prepend the key. And it means that we concatenate the key before the message. So why do we add the key? This one is to preserve integrity. So we hash the key concatenated with the message. But uh, we know from the previous uh, lectures that uh, this one is susceptible to the length attack, length extension attack. The length extension attack means that the uh, adversary can find uh, a tag without knowing the key. So he, he knows the hash, uh, like, first of all, the adversary sends M1, right, to the challenger. The challenger sends back T1. Right, so we have M1 and T1, and uh, T1 is the hash of the key concatenated with the message M1. So we have M1 and T1, but we don't know the key, right? But we don't need to know the key because we can just produce a new message M2, okay? And we can find the tag T2 of the message M2 without knowing the key. How? We can just hash the tag that we received, T1, concatenated with M2. So the challenger will check for um, the challenger will check for the key and it will find the key. Even though the adversary doesn't know the key, he will find it inside. And he will so he will find the pair M2 and T2 such that T2 equals the hash of the hash of K and M1, uh, K concatenated with M1, all concatenated with the message M2. All right. And then what happens is that the challenger will output one because the verification algorithm will produce one. Why? Because the adversary sent a valid, uh, valid pair M2 and T2. Regularly, the, in the normal case, the adversary will send M1 and T1, and it will send M1, but he, he will find a, a new pair that he didn't send previously. He didn't send M1 and receive T2. He didn't receive T2. He just found M1 and T, uh, M2 and T2, and this is when we have a forgery. So, uh, like, if I will explain the... Max security, we have a forgery, uh, we, we break the security goal uh, with forgery. And forgery is if the adversary can find an M, I, and T, I pair that has not been sent before. So he didn't send M1 and receive T1 and then send M1, T1. This is not a forgery, but if he sends M2 and T2 where he did not send the challenger previously M2, and receive T2, he just found out what M2 and T2 are, the pair. All right, so now we know that it is not, uh, the pre-MAC is not secure. And this is also the security, uh, the, uh, the, alg uh, the, uh, the equation uh, that shows the advantage of the adversary over the pre-MAC which is the probability that the challenger will output one, given uh, the input of the uh, adversary is M, 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 I, T, I, which does not exist in the set of previously sent M, I, and T, I pairs. Okay, I hope this is clear, my explaining. So we the, it equals to one, which is uh, non-negligible, which means that the uh, uh, the equation does not satisfy uh, the security goal because this should be negligible, but it's not. 
So how do we solve the length extension attack? We just append the key. We just concatenate the key after the message. And now it is not susceptible to the uh, length extension attack. But uh, there's a, a collision attack. Because as we know that um, we have an infinite, almost يعني, an infinite set of messages and um, we do not have an infinite set of tags. So obviously there is at least some tag that maps to more than one message. All right. So this is the pigeonhole principle. And in this case, uh, we have a collision. All right. So... Um, we have the case that T1 maps to message M1 and message M2. Okay? Equals to T2. يعني, يعني T2 equals to T1, but the message M1 does not equal to M2. Alright? So here we have M1 does not equal to M2. However, HM1 equals to HM2. So this is like the same if m1 concatenated with k1 and m2 concatenated with k1 we will find uh, an equal pair of hash for uh, different messages so this is a collision we found the collision if given a has already found the collision then obviously uh, the equation will not satisfy because then the adversary will give a valid pair and uh, the App Mac algorithm will be valid and the challenger will output one and the probability that it will output one equals one. So this is the most secure and popular hash based Mac algorithm used in these uh, protocols. So it's proven secure as long as the hash function is secure and how we name it is HMAC dash the name of the hash used like if we're using the sha1 then we call it hmac dash sha1 all right so this is the definition it is the hash of all of this wait the hash of all of this Okay, so first of all, we have K exhort with iPad. This is an inner inner pad concatenated with M1. This is hashed with an IV, a fixed IV. Then it outputs the hash of K exhort with iPad, hash of K exhort with iPad. And this hash of K XORD with iPad is then concatenated with K XORD with OPAD. All right, so now we have K XORD with OPAD concatenated to the hash of K XORD with iPad, concatenated with M. Sorry, this is inside this. And then we hash all of this with a fixed IV and we have an output which is the output, all right? So um, they are fixed strength of the same length uh, as the hash block size, all right? Because, and uh, when we want to do the XOR operation, the, the two, the two uh, elements or the two numbers being XOR should be the same length, right? So the, if the key is smaller, then it is padded with zeros. If it's shorter, then the hash block size. All right. So this is the end of the video. No, this is not the end of the video. Okay, so this is uh, based on hash. This is the end of the hash hash based Mac. Then we will discuss the block cipher based Mac. Okay, Mac based on block ciphers. So we discussed the CBC in the block ciphers before, and we know that it cannot be parallelized because it is like uh, like M1 needs to be computed. Uh, then we find C C C1 here. 
then C1 is an input to uh, the algorithm for the M2 XORed with the C1 uh, encrypted to, with the key to find uh, C2, okay? So the difference is in the CBC MAC, uh, uh, sorry, in the CBC block cipher, uh, C1 is used as an output and uh, C2 is used as an output. But in this case, we don't need a bunch of outputs. So yeah, it doesn't, doesn't need to be the same length as the message. We will just output uh, one, one tag in the last block, all right? Okay, so we know for a fixed IV, the CBC is insecure. Why? So let's see for this case. If the adversary can find M1, uh, okay, so the adversary sends to the challenger M1, then he will receive C1, right? It doesn't matter the length of this, Yanni. Uh, don't be fooled by the picture. Then uh, the challenger, uh, sorry, the adversary can send M2 to the challenger and then receive C2, right? And of course, this block C1 equals to T1. We use it as the tag. So we know that T1 equals to the encryption of the M1 message, right? And T2 is the encryption of the M is of the M2 message, right? So now we know M1, M2, T1, and T2. What do we do? So the adversary uh, will uh, create a new message M3, which is the M1 concatenated with M2 XOR T1. So uh, what happens here if we observe M1, then it's, it's the produ it produces C1, which is the ciphertext of M1. Then C1 will go into be exhorted with M2 XOR T1. So if T1 is here and we XOR it with M2 XOR T1, what happens to T1 XOR with T1? Obviously, we will be left with M2 because this will equal to zero. It will cancel and we will have M2. So this, so what happens here? We have the encryption of M2. So we are left with M2 and we have the encryption of M2. So the output here is T2 because the encryption of M2 is C2 and C2 equals to T2. And in this case, M3 message produces tag T2. So, so the tag T3 should equal to T2 because this is the output for message, T, uh, for message M3. And this is the last block. And of course, this it, it doesn't matter how long this is. This it will always work. The, uh, this case will always work. M3 will just be M1. Um, it doesn't matter how long M1 is and how many blocks it's uh, uh, divided into. All right. So in this for this CBC Mac, the adversary. Uh, can find a pair M3 and T3 for M3 was not sent before and he will find T3 which he did not receive from the adversary and he will produce a valid pair which do not exist in the set of previously sent pairs or previously sent messages and received tags okay so this is a violation again for the security attack for the security goal that we intended before. So what do we do? Uh, we produce the CMAC. The CMAC is just the same as the CBC. However, you know how the last block is what produces our tag. So our issue is with the last block because we can just XOR with um, uh, the previous message and the previous tag. Right. So in this case, what do we do? We change just the last block and we give it a new K, a new key. And in this case, the encryption of the, the previous message, let's say it's M3, the encryption of M3 will produce, uh, will be XORed 
and uh, we will cancel of course it will cancel and we were left with the uh, t the pre, uh, the t's will cancel and we are we are left with the m3 and we will have the encryption however the encryption will not, not be the same as the previous one because we have a k2 okay so this is k1 and this is k2 so it will not be the same as the yani, as the previous okay so uh, i will not explain the dedicated mac but the dedicated mac is just uh, producing a mac algorithm from scratch okay so we designed the mac according to the to the criteria that we need to preserve the integrity uh, without uh, having to use uh, old algorithms like the hash system or the block ciphers uh, and um, trying to uh, uh, like change in them uh, to in order to fit our criteria we can just just produce the mac from scratch so this is all for the video and please tell me if the video is good